Hey guys, in this video I want to talk to you about some essentials you may need, I needed, um, for a hysteroscopy or laparoscopy surgery. Um, everybody's different. I think my surgery experience was a little bit different than um, some of the other videos I'd watch. Sorry, my nose is so itchy. Ah! Um, so I kind of want to give my take on what I experienced and what I think you need. Um, and so that sounds interesting just keep watching <laughs> okay got my notepad list um, the first thing is to get your Rona test if you're in 2020 if you're in 2021 hell who knows how long this is going on um, you need that test so that's an essential so you can get your surgery I assume pretty much everywhere um, and I recommend getting it within your system if you watched my last video um, I'll put a card in here where I explained about my surgery experience a little bit, um, a lot of bit about before my surgery and how I got it all like planned out and that. And so I think it's best to get it within the system where you're having your surgery, if at all possible. That way it's in their computer system and they know your results and things like that. Uh, my second thing I would recommend is if you have to do magnesium citrate um, for like a lower bowel, like semi bowel prep. Um, I recommend the grape magnesium citrate. Um, I'll put a picture in here. Um, and I got mine from CVS. At first I had bought the lemon lime from just the Dollar Tree. And then when I went by CVS, I looked and like all the purple ones were gone except once. Um, the grape flavor I mean. And so I was like, oh, I bet this one's good. And actually ended up being good. I mixed it with a body armor. Um, and that would be my third thing is to make sure you're overly, <laughs> basically overly hydrated. Um, when I had talked to one of the surgical people or maybe it was my surgical nurse, um, they had told me to make sure I stay hydrated, um, to drink like Gatorade. So I, I prefer body armors and I'll put a picture of what they look like here. Um, I like the pineapple coconut. And so I was drinking a lot of that trying to stay hydrated because I didn't want to be so dehydrated from the, um, the bowel prep, the magnesium citrate that makes you go. And I think when I had, um, got my colonoscopy, it's been like 10 years ago now. Um, I know that I had only drinking, drank, drank, drinking about half of what I was supposed to. And I was so dehydrated, um, that by the time I had my colonoscopy, I was like about passing out because I was just like, there's... You know, there's nothing left in me. Um, and so this time around, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to be like that. So I was very vigilant about like, oh, I'm just, <laughs> I'm like, my sugars are probably crazy at this point. But oh, well, I just need to keep drinking and staying hydrated. Um, so yeah, recommend those. Um, the fourth thing I you guys should get are big pads. Like I even think I should have got like adult diaper, like the pins, because I bled a lot. Um, and I bled for like three three-ish days very heavily and then it kind of tapered off to me it reminds me of a like reverse period like you bleed a ton and then it was kind of like like almost fibrous like tissue I guess endometrial tissue in my serve uh not my cervix <laughs> from my uterus um and then it changed to kind of like mucusy stuff so it was like the reverse kind of of how my period normally is um but yeah, get some big old, big old pads, like, you know, like the kind after you get, um, have a baby or even just some kind of depends. I've seen some people recommend like those, um, like surgical briefs or I don't know what they're called, but like, you know, big old granny panties, that'd probably work. Um, I have noticed where like my underwear on my incisions, I doesn't feel great, even though there's band-aids and stuff on them. So anything that's a little bit higher in between your like mid-rise brief, I think would be best. Um, so it doesn't hit your belly button if you do have a belly button incision. Um, and then it's not like on your hip bone. So somewhere in between there or above your belly button, I guess, is another like super high rise undies. Um, but yeah, so that worked out okay. Cause my, the hotel we were staying at right next door, there's a grocery store. Um, and so my mom had went over and got some cause I had just had some like smaller pads and stuff. Why are people doing fireworks? Um, <laughs> I had some smaller, like, you know, medium sized pads, but this was like, you know, wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna cut it. 
Um, the fifth thing I recommend, I would actually found these at Dollar Tree. It was just like a little under pad thing, like for accidents, kind of like doggy pad deals. But I didn't know during the night, you know, if your, my incision would leak or if I would leak down there. Um, so I put that underneath me on the bed. I didn't end up needing them, but I thought it was a good idea just to have in case. Um, next thing, let's see, what I say? Oh, band-aids. So they do put band-aids on your incisions, but they didn't give me any kind of like, oh, here you go, pack. You know, they just, the pad they put between my legs right after. Um, and then they had band-aids on my incision. So make sure you do have band-aids. Um, I'm allergic to like band-aid adhesive. And so, uh, I don't know if it's a rubber or I don't know what it is. Um, so actually I had kind of like broken out. Um, now this was like, I'd say day four or whatever, my band-aids. Cause I'd taken them off. I didn't really break out, but I'd taken a shower, cleaned everything. Um, and then put new band-aids on. And then when I took those band-aids off. Um, is when I realized that I had broken out from them. So what I ended up doing was switching it up. And instead of like the fabric band-aids, I used like the waterproof band-aids, um, which I would recommend instead of for the simple reason that maybe you wouldn't break out either on them. Maybe you don't break out. Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, but like when I go to take my pants down, so I put my thumb like, you know, under the waistband of my pants. And sometimes my thumb would catch in between like the, the little um, the little gauze part of the band-aid in like my skin and then I would kind of pull <laughs> and that would pull my incision so 10 out of 10 would not recommend that like that hurt but when you have the um, waterproof band-aids that are like sealed all the way around like you're not as likely to like catch it on stuff I don't believe so I recommend those waterproof band-aids instead um, maybe the wound doesn't like get as much air so maybe it's not uh, medically as good to use but they didn't really tell me anything about that either way so took it into my own hands um, seven I would recommend snacks or meal prepping ahead of time um, they say to eat really light after and not like a bunch of greasy food because of all the gas you don't want to create eat things that create more gas I luckily did not have a lot of gas um, I thought I was, some people say that's the worst pain, like not your incisions, not the surgery, it's just the gas pain. Um, I really didn't have that. I couldn't really lay on my side because it would like hurt, you know, my incisions and stuff, but um, it really wasn't from the gas. Like, so that was interesting. Um, I was expecting to be in a lot of pain. I don't know if he just did really good and got all the gas out. Um, but yeah, so that was fine. Um... Let's see, seven. Oh, another thing. So this is number eight. Oh, and I said in meal prep. So you have things ready. So if you're at home, you know, if you have kids or whatever, um, the reason is, you know, if there's already something that's easily to get prepared, um, definitely recommend that, you know, like lighter meals that are easy. So somebody doesn't have to go out and get stuff. Um, the next thing I put is like Advil or lesser painkillers. So my physician said that I could... Um, like rotate like uh, Tylenol or Advil um, with the tramadol like every four hours I could take as much tramadol as I wanted which I didn't it's a synthetic opioid um, but I took it that one the first night of my surgery and I was like um so I'm kind of like dizzy like not feeling good so I think I and I really wasn't hurting that bad from my surgery at all so I would recommend you know if you're starting to hurt maybe try the painkillers they give you but it ended up being like side effects worse than the benefit of taking it. So yeah, just have some regular old Advil. Um, one thing on some of these videos I saw people recommend were these charcoal caps. So I had my mom and dad actually go to Walgreens and get them. They're like 20 bucks. It's just charcoal, I think in a capsule, which I was like, I got charcoal at home. I could have made my own capsules. Um, but they went and bought them. I didn't end up needing them. So they're actually going to return them. Because like I said, everybody has said they have this terrible gas pain. I've seen the pictures. Like their belly looks like hard. Like there's this like little teeny Instagram chick. And then she had this surgery. And you know, she went from really skinny to like obviously like super bloated. And, and like her stomach was like distended and hard. And I just didn't have that. Like my tummy looked about normal, you know. It's a little pudgy, but whatever. 
Um, so yeah, I didn't need those, but in case you think you might have that issue, you may want to have them on hand. I mean, you can always take them back to Walgreens, I guess, if that happens to you like it did to me. <laughs> so, um, next thing would be number 10, and I said a comfy outfit, um, something that's easy to put on and off, and a comfortable mask. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of self-explanatory. I had to, uh, put, after surgery, I had to put on my clothes myself, and that was kind of hard, um, coming right out of surgery and trying to get everything on. So you might want something that has, you know, just easy pull-on pants, because I had, like, some sweatpants on. Um, I had, like, a little pullover kind of hoodie deal. Um, so that was decently easy to put on. Um, and your mask. So on the phone they had told me once I got back to the pre-op that I could take my mask off because basically everybody's been tested. Um, but like everybody still had their mask on. So I kept my mask on. Maybe I could have taken it off. I don't know. Um, but you want a comfortable mask because you're going to be wearing it. I think I had it on. Well, no, they took, they took it off of me because I had to put on my oxygen mask. I'm not really sure where my, I'm not sure where my mask went. It went somewhere. Um, but yeah, you know, with everything that's going on, you got to wear a mask. So have a nice mask. Um, for my birthday, I'd gotten, um, one of my coworkers had made me a mask. And so that was my, that was my surgery mask I wore. Um, and it had like little scrunch. She made like little scrunchy almost, um, elastic to go around my ears. So that was cute. But, um, the next thing I recommend is a heating pad. So, the first night, um, my stomach, you know, did hurt a little bit. The incisions hurt a little bit. Um, so I would recommend a heating pad. Um, even here lately, like, my back has been hurting. Um, starting at day, like, five or six. And I don't know what that's about. Um, I'm still bleeding or, like, et cetera, um, fluids, um, and so I'm not sure why my like lower back and stuff is hurt, but, um, that kind of, I think even it helps for that, like whatever, you know, whatever's hurting you, might as well try it. My arm was hurting like one night kind of bad cause they then blew it up a little. Um, and so I kind of put the heating pad on that. Like they're really just good for all sorts of stuff. So I would recommend a heating pad, of course. Um, 12, I put... Uh, driver <laughs> so you want somebody there obviously to come pick you up you can't drive um, if you take painkillers after you know the days the next few days you can't drive you're not supposed to drive for at least 24 hours anyway after surgery um, but um, I'd recommend have someone to try and wait there in the waiting room although it's like hours um, so they can get the scripts for you. I've heard of some people getting the scripts uh, ahead of time, so that would be good if that's already done. Um, but if it's not, you know, they need to talk to somebody. Um, I was really grateful that um, he let Marin video the, like, conference of what he had to say about the surgery and, and the, in, the uh, endometriosis endometriosis um like scoring and stuff like that he had a paper and so Marin like zoomed in on the paper and all that um because he didn't talk to me like if that didn't happen I would just have to go off of what Marin could remember you know he's not going to remember oh they found some here and here and you know like the diagrams and stuff like that so I don't have that um paper because it gets like turned in with surgery stuff um so I'm a person who really likes knowing things um, so I was glad that Miriam recorded it. So we had it, you know, straight from the surgeon's mouth, um, about how it went and like what all they found and stuff like that. So another thing is, <laughs> I guess, have your driver, um, record it or whoever's there with you, your support person. Um, if they let, let them, you know, write it down or record it or something so they can tell you if they don't come and talk to you after you wake up out of surgery. So, you know, everything. Um, next thing I recommend is to have some kind of shower stool or if you shower somewhere you can sit down or, you know, whatever. Um, I took a shower, I think it was on day two. Um, and because I was bleeding a lot, like, you know, and maybe because of that dram at all, um, I was really kind of woozy. And so in the hotel we stayed at, they had like it built in kind of a little seat. So that was nice. So in case you start feeling not so good, you know, like your first shower is going to be kind of hard. So have somebody there to help you or, um, have a shower seat is what I recommend. Um, number 14 
is I think a big one uh, baby wipes so obviously you want baby wipes to like clean yourself and all that but also baby wipes slash face wipes uh, when days you're in, like I can't I can't take a shower yet like I ain't feeling it um, you know just like wash your face like wash kind of wipe your body down or whatever I highly recommend baby wipes they're good for lots of things um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, please comment down below. Um, that's my 14 things, probably more like 15 or maybe. Oh, now I remember what number 15 was. Apple juice or something to help you make, help make you go, um, after your surgery. So like I said, a lot of women have issues with like the gas and like constipation and all that. And so some recommend different things for that. Um, I went on day, let's see, my surgery was on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night. Um, so I don't think I went on Monday morning before my surgery. Um, so that was like three, you know, three full days or whatever. Um, some women I think go longer and like with the gas pain or the constipation, it's just really not feeling good. Um, so a lot, they say to eat light meals, um, stuff that doesn't make you more gassy, but I actually ate pho. Uh, pho. One of the days, and I forget what else, which that is a, um, you know, Vietnamese soup, um, and it does usually make me go poop, but, um, so it didn't, but I think it just kind of moved things along, and then I was drinking a lot of it, apple juice, so I recommend apple juice for me, that always makes me go, maybe it doesn't work for you, um, but I was drinking apple juice, and so I finally went, um, Wednesday night, Oh, I meant to say the soup has, like, a higher fat content because the one I get has, like, rare beef and, like, meatballs and stuff like that. Um, and I love it. It's just really good. It's very, like, comforting food. It's kind of like chicken noodle soup, but not. Um, they also do have a chicken version that my husband gets. But, um, so I had that. So I think that kind of helped things start going. Um, the apple juice, um, and just staying hydrated. Because, obviously, if you're dehydrated, you get more constipated as well. So that doesn't add to the fact that the anesthesia makes you constipated. If you take the painkillers, um, those make you constipated. So a lot of things add together to make you constipated. Um, when I first went, it was like little little poop rocks. Um, but then it became, you know, by my, by like Friday, it became more regular. Um, so I think my apple juice trick worked. Um, so yeah, recommend also getting apple juice. But um, those are just my recommendations of things that you may need, probably will need, um, when you have this um, hysteroscopy, laparoscopy. Kind of depends on which one you're getting. If you're getting both, you know, probably most of this stuff. If you're not, um, I know hysteroscopies are less invasive, so, you know, you're not going to need the band-aids. Um, you're not going to have incisions and stuff like that. So um, everything's a little bit different, but it, or versus if you just have laparoscopy, are you going to bleed a bunch? Probably not, so you won't need that stuff. But this video is more for people who are getting the two-for-one, you know, bumper-to-bumper -bumper deal as my uh, reproductive endocrinologist slash surgeon slash doctor um, calls it. But if you have any questions, comment down below. I'll try to answer them from my experience. Um, my experience isn't completely done because I still have my follow-up appointment um, this coming weekend. Um, where they're going to go back in and check um, and see if scar tissue has grown. Um, so yeah, comment down below, let me know, and I will try to get back to you guys as soon as I can. Um, if you want to check out my other video on my um, surgery experience, or if you want to check out um, the video I made before that about how I found out I had um, a septated uterus and I needed this, um, procedure, these procedures, these two procedures, um, check that out, look at that video, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear more about my journey with infertility, and I will see you guys later, bye.